Okay, so in today's case, you have a patient who's 27 year old woman. She comes to your clinic and on her appearance, she appears to be obese and she complains of irregular periods since the time her period started. And uh, apart from that, she complains of hirsutism and acne, that is facial hair and acne. And uh, she also has issues with uh, darkened skin or darkened hyperpigmented areas like the neck and in the inner thighs. Okay, these are all her complaints. On being asked about family history, she says there's a uh, family history of diabetes and her vital stats appear to be normal. From all these findings, you kind of come to a conclusion it could be, or rather when you come to a differential diagnosis, PCOD or PCOS will be one of the most significant uh, fa um, you know, uh, conclusions. So uh, let's look a little bit into PCOS. Okay, so polycystic ovarian syndrome is otherwise called as stain leventhal syndrome. And uh, in order to be classified as a polycystic ovarian syndrome, there are a couple of criteria. There is a criteria called Rotterdam criteria. Okay, so it has three main uh, things that has to be found in order to be classified as a polycystic ovarian syndrome. First is your oligomenorrhea. Okay, second one is the hyperandrogenism. And uh, also the most important one is that because as the name says polycystic, so there has to be more than 12 peripheral cysts. Okay, so you have your ovary. So around the peripheral, uh, in, in the periphery of the ovary, you need to find these cysts and that has to be more than 12 cysts that you can find. It is basically, you know, it forms something like a necklace like pattern. We'll come to that later on. So this Rotterdam criteria is important. Keep that in mind. Also, um, remember, there is increased in luteinizing hormone and the, f and the follicle stimulating hormone is normal. Okay, so what exactly is this PCOS? Okay, so now I told you it's basically a chronic anovulatory state. So basically there's no ovulation. Now if you remember uh, your ovulation cycle, what exactly happens, so the phases of ovulation We'll probably do, uh, you know, one of the videos on that. But uh, for now, if you go back and try to recollect, you'll remember that um, in this ovulation phase, you have your corpus luteum, which is formed. Okay, and that is a very important step or that leads to the uh, rise of your progesterone levels. So here, you know, there's no ovulation. So when there is no ovulation, right, there's no corpus luteum that's formed. And in turn, there's no progesterone. So your estrogen levels keep rising and uh, estrogen remains unopposed by progesterone. So your unopposed estrogen, which is a important, which is something that you find in PCOS. Okay. So what happens is um, there is no progesterone in this condition, which is very important for the shedding of the endometrial layers. Okay. So because there's no corpus luteum that's formed and because that doesn't give rise to increased progesterone levels, there is no shedding of the endometrium. So the endometrium kind of, you know, when there is no um, atresia or when there is no shedding, what happens is there will be hyperplasia. Okay. So there is an hyperplastic endometrium, which is what happens in your polycystic ovarian syndrome. So if this endometrium gets thicker and thicker and gets more hyperplastic, what happens is you have irregular bleeding, which is one of the consequence. And in your worst case scenario, it also leads to endometrial cancer. Okay, so that is something that you need to keep in mind. So as we're talking about endometrial cancer right now, let's deal with, suppose you have a patient who comes to you with, uh, you know, um, because of polycystic ovarian syndrome, it has led to endometrial cancer and you've kind of detected it in the very early stages when, you know, in grade one stages in the early phases, if you are uh, detected, what will be your first line of treatment? That could be, you know, that could also be a kind of question that you are, are asked in the exam. So the first line of treatment would be a high dose of progestin, right? Because the, the issue is with the no progesterone. So the high dose progestin can be used in this grade one kind of um, endometrial cancer for treatment, okay? Now, what can this polycystic ovarian syndrome lead to? Some of the complications can be your diabetes mellitus because of insulin resistance, which is also related to these androgens in testosterone. So your insulin resistance leading to diabetes mellitus, cardiovascular disease, endometrial cancer, like I told you, and infertility, all right? 
So what are the different causes of this uh, polycystic ovarian syndrome or disease? So you have a couple of reasons. First and foremost, it's, it's hereditary, runs in the family, so it's familial. Okay. Secondly, it could also be because of certain, um, you, your life. it could be because of the uh, person's lifestyle. Smoking, alcohol, lack of exercise, ob obesity, all these things. And thirdly, it could also be because of medications. Alright, so how do you diagnose polycystic ovarian syndrome? Okay, first of all, there are a couple of um, serum levels that have to be tested. So your, TH your, your thyroid stimulating hormone, TSH levels. Then your testosterone levels, serum testosterone levels. Your lipid profile, if it's hyperlipidemia, you know it's pointing towards, you know, certain conditions, then you also, like, like I told you earlier, it could also lead to diabetes mellitus and insulin resistance. So diagnosis can also be from your glucose tolerance test, finding out your uh, sugar levels. So glu your glucose tolerance test to understand the insulin resistance. And then, like we said the earlier, serum testosterone levels. So you have you're basically checking your androgen levels. Like I told you, it's a hyper androgen androgenic condition, isn't it? So you know that your androgen levels are going to be increased. So checking up your testosterone and DHEAS. It's testosterone released from the ovaries and the DHEAS released from the adrenal glands. Okay. So these increased andro androgen levels are the is the main reason that you find conditions like you know the facial hair coming up you know because androgens in men so you know men have facial hair it's basically related okay so hirsutism facial hair acne alopecia again loss of hair all these things that you find because of the increased androgen levels now increased androgen levels are not only seen in conditions like polycystic ovarian syndrome apart from that you also have it in adrenal or ovarian tumors you also find it in cushing syndrome and also in your thyroid disorders okay Apart from all these diagnostic tests, you have one test, which is the ultrasound, which is very, very important to diagnose the uh, polycystic ovaries. Basically, your ovaries are going to be enlarged, isn't it? So ultrasound can be done either pelvic ultrasound or your transvaginal ultrasound will help you to detect the enlarged ovaries. Okay, so there will be an ovarian enlargement. And like I told you earlier in the beginning, there is a peripheral all these peripheral cysts are seen in the ovary so it's basically like a necklace towards the corners of the oleg towards the periphery of the ovary you find like a necklace like pattern in the cyst and you find around 20 to 100 it's it has to be more than 12 to be to fall under this uh, rotterdam criteria that we saw earlier but apart from that you find 20 to ovary 20 to 100 so 20 to 100 peripheral cysts okay now, in patients with this polycystic ovarian syndrome, around 50% of them have abnormal vaginal bleeding and 20% of them have normal menses. Okay. Now, coming to treatments. So, basically, you know, causes are, you know, you have to, uh, you know, the causes are like lifestyle and the familial conditions and all those things. So, your treatment has to be uh, targeted towards the modification of lifestyle so you have to exercise weight loss is very important and all those things and uh, basically diet has to be you have to be very uh, maintain a strict diet to maintain the lipid profile and all those things apart from that for people or for couples who are trying to get pregnant if if you find that the woman has this situation now to aid in pregnancy you can induce ovulation all right, because you know it's an anovulatory phase, there's no ovulation happening. So if they want to get pregnant, they have to. You have to induce ovulation in the woman. Okay. So how do you induce ovulation? There are a lot of medications. So one is clomiphene citrate. Trade name is Clomid. And most of the times in such patients, you you find an insulin resistance. So you have to add metformin as an adjunct. Okay. So metformin, the hypoglycemic uh, drugs, will have to be added as adjuncts with this clomiphene citrate to induce the ovulation. Yep. So this is a brief understanding on polycystic ovarian syndrome. Um, so once the main things that you need to know are the consequent, the complications, the causes, the treatment, and the diagnostic tests. Mm, yeah, so if you guys have any doubts on any of these or any questions, you can post in your comments below. Thank you.